No, 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 no. Uh, we back with special edition podcast. Not even just another Monday. We drop every Monday. What's so funny already? You see how it is? You see how it is? Special edition. Se, se lleva, se va a llevar y no se va a aguantar. Tostado. All right, let's start off right away. This is the not going to lie questions that y'all answered. Appreciate y'all. Is it personality or looks more important to y'all? With my track record, I don't think you can say it's looks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we started off strong right now. <laughs> um, no, I'm just playing. Um, definitely personality. <laughs> Dang. Damn, that's how you feel, huh? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, honestly, honestly, it has to be personality. I feel like yeah, tr- looks is a bonus, but if I mean, I'd rather have someone that can make me laugh. You know, I don't want to be stuck with a a good looking person and just being serious all the time, or him being boring or too in- too much into themselves. What? I remember the quote of of Kai Sinat, uh Sinat when he says, <laughs> "You can make her laugh." Laughing giggle, you can make that ass clap and jiggle. <laughs> it's because when she laughs so much, her eyes are closed most of the time, so she doesn't really see how you look. <laughs> what? Oh, it's coming out hot today. Oh, damn. Okay. That's why I sudando on esta. I know. I think it's the sweaters. I think yeah, it's nah, this was going to be a little different, so just we already started it, but again, these are based off of the not going to lie questions, kind of going to go with it. You guys are going to get to know us just a little bit more. Where we stand now, currently, but Bebe, is it looks or personality? What is it? Looks at the beginning, because looks get you interested, right? Facts. Personality keeps you around. Just saying. That Just is saying. true. Yeah, no. What about you? What about you? For sure, looks at the beginning, right? Exactly. But it's the like if personality. If you have a piece of shit personality where you think you're this or that, like. Nah, you're ugly now. You went from being a 7 out of 10 to eh, about a 4. On a good day. Yeah, because I, I think I think I'm a 5. But... I'm like a 3. You know, but next to you, baby girl, I'm a 10. I don't know about y'all, but... <laughs> now, nah, you know what? My answer changes you know when I, I get a haircut. I have confidence, I know. When I get a haircut, I go from a 5 to like maybe like a 7.5. And if we're at a bar, at a club, the lights are off, 10. It's the height. It's the, it's the height. I'm not going to lie. Wait, we have a girl here. What? Does height matter? Well, honestly, me, I'm pretty short myself, but I do feel like the person has to be taller than me. I'm not going to look you straight in the face and, like, kiss you. You know, that's awkward. <laughs> like She's about that tippy-toe life, huh? <laughs> no, I mean, as long as it can look up. <laughs> like, aim hot, aim hot. You know, I don't, as long as it's harder than me, I don't care. Damn, someone hit me with, does Do Scroll have a crush on anyone? Nah. Nope. They don't work. You sure about that? <sighs> Are you sure about that? Are you sure about we that? We don't catch feelings, we catch flights over here. I don't even catch flights, I can't afford it. <laughs> Talk for yourself, I've been wanting to take a flight. Where are we going? We're about to, we're I about to. I need a new trip, I need another one before the end of the year. Let's plan some. Let's plan a trip. We need to Texas. We can, go to Mexico. We can fly. We can, Ooh, we can Guadalajara. Go to Mexico. We all have passports. What? We all have what? <laughs> passports. Yeah, we all got passports. We have passports. Passports. Stop. We have passports. Passports. All right. This one's kind of um. Someone said, "When you hit rock bottom, look around you. Everything and everyone that is left is all you truly need in life." That's facts. Yep. Whoever said facts. that. You speak nothing but the truth. They don't lie. All right, this is a confession. Y'all Ooh. ready for this? Ooh, so My much. first breakup was that he broke up with me and tried to get back with me, but he confessed he slept with his ex. Do you take him back, yes or no? Ooh, that's hard. I mean, well, I don't know. I feel like it depends on the reason they broke up. They just said it. I don't know. They really? broke up. And then he confessed that he slept with his ex. Do you take why, him back? No, wait, why? why they broke no, up? but we're not speaking hypothetically. Like, no, I, do you, okay. would so you take like, him back? Either way, no. would you take him back after knowing that, like, once you and your ex broke up and they, they want to go sleep with someone else? Yeah. Should I sleep with someone else? Yeah, honestly, well, to me, yeah. I feel like to me, it's like, depending, like, obviously, if the girl didn't do anything, like, me personally, I wouldn't because I was like, damn, you dirty now. 
to me that's kind of dirty because like why would you want to go mess with someone else and then come back to me that's true or what if you messed around with somebody else in the that don't count that don't count that don't count it does count <laughs> because she's trying to say she would feel like he's dirty but if she did the same does that mean she feels dirty too I don't know mm. wow See what I'm saying? I don't know. All right, do you, does it cancel? Does it cancel each other out? Like, hey, you step with somebody, I step with somebody. We I think it's just the way you want to together. take it. I, your personal preference, I guess. Okay, okay. You know, some people it's like, okay, well, if it meant nothing, if it was just that one thing, it was that one release you needed, you know, one last release, you know. If Damn. that's okay with some people, but me personally, I wouldn't take it. I'd rather not know. Yeah. Oh, thousand. Or the, yeah. <laughs> just don't tell me. I rather, I rather just not know. That's just easier. Yeah. Just yeah. Don't it's tell a me. lot easier. I don't know. It doesn't person. hurt me. I exactly. live like that. What doesn't kill you? No. Ellie Clarkson. Oh well. Ah, well. ah <laughs> shout out. That's your song. That's your song. <laughs> That's my song. Fireworks is my song. All right. Someone said, "I hate, I hate when people have pets." <laughs> How do you hate pets? I'm not gonna lie. I hate when people have have dogs in their house. Big dogs, actually. You know what? But when they're when they let them around I'm gonna the have house, my dogs. Right? the inside of the house. I've and been sleeping with my dog. And there's fucking he loves me. Wait, like we're talking about real dogs or? <laughs> <laughs> she loves the dogs. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> All the dogs. All them. Dogs. No, honestly, well, I mean, if you follow me, you know I have my big old Belgian Malinois. He's my protector, though. Like he's my he's my baby. Oh, Paisa, we got you. Wow. Hey, I have a chihuahua too, you know, but I feel like if you have a big dog, you need to have a little dog. You just have to. And the little dog always runs things. Mm. Yeah, yeah. All right, confession. Here we go. Was with this guy almost four years. Broke up with him because I got tired of asking for the bare minimum. Damn. We never stopped talking and finally cut him off. He he is blaming me because I gave him so many chances and so Many opportunities. Finally accepted my worth, and he didn't really want to be with me. Girl, that's a blessing right there. Honestly, because honestly, I've been in the same situation. Four years spent with someone, got the bare minimum, and it's like, mm. for what? And I promise you, whoever that is, once you get that real love, you wouldn't even look back. You're like, dang, what, why was I? Why was I accepting the bare minimum, you know? Because honestly, what one man won't do, another one will. If he it wanted really to, is. he would. If he wanted to, he would. Honestly, he really would. As a guy's perspective now, like, be honest. If you really wanted a girl, would you go above and beyond for her? Hmm. Now, asking <laughs> you guys, now from your perspective. Well, I think everybody has a different uh, opinion of what's the bare minimum. My bare minimum is communicate with me, understand that what I'm doing and, you know, be my peace, not my fucking destruction. So that's my bare minimum. Like, as long as we talk, you know what I'm doing. I know what you're doing. Even though we don't see each other every single day, that's fine. As long as you know where we stand and we make time for each other when that is possible. If that's too much, kick rocks. I'd rather be alone at that point. That's right. That's my guy right there. We both that's understand right. that. All right. Uh, what's this one? How do you feel when you first applied for your first job and went in the first day on the job? What was it? No, first of all, what was your guys' first job? Oof, it's been a minute. Mm. My actual first first job was T-Mobile. How yeah. old? Mm, was it nineteen? Like eighteen going into nineteen? Man, I was. Mm, I was like a new kid on the block. Thought like. Drove a little electric car to work. It was in Long Beach. Had my lunch and all that shit. Oh, I was nervous as hell. And then down the line, down the line, that shows a wrap. Uh, my first job was McDonald's. <laughs> Honestly, I was sixteen. I was just like, just trying to hustle. Honestly, I didn't like asking my parents for money, and I wanted my car. And so I, me and my best friend worked. <laughs> oh, Carol, <laughs> she got me a job at <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> We don't talk about Carolina. We don't. We don't. Cause uh, we don't talk, we don't talk about, about Carolina. No. But, uh, we got a McDonald's manager in the house. Nah, X. X manager. <laughs> X oh, manager. X, sorry. X. Sorry. The bad days. <laughs> Would you now looking back? What was the, probably the worst? The worst thing that happened at your first job? 
I'm gonna be honest. They closed. I used to, well, my first job ever was Mervin's. Mervin's. Oh, but I was only there for like a couple months. Tell me how old, old you are without telling me how old. I know. Like, hold up, you're old. I, well, yeah, I used to shop at Inker Blue. Hey, what the hell? Like, damn, I'm not. I'm not trying to. Damn, Mervin. Trying to say that I'm not. That's right. <laughs> damn. Damn, damn. Mervin. Damn. Well, damn. Yeah, I was hold only up. there for like two months because then they closed. Well, they went out of business, so yeah. They're like, you guys can stay or y'all can go. So I just left. Mm. What was the worst thing that happened at Mervin's? Dude, I, I was chilling at Mervin's. I fucking <laughs> love that place. Like, I used to, like, as messed up as it sounds, I used to get everybody and their mom to sign up for a credit card. Like, I was chilling. I was I was good. That 26% interest didn't matter to me. I, I'm like, <laughs> hey. Hey, but you go right now and no, you get a you get $10 off. Nah, Mervin's actually had good coupons and shit. I'll give, I'll give them that. I'll give them that. I used to shop a lot of Ink or Blue. Hell yeah, that shit was at the West Coast. Like, shorts? Yeah, low key, the little the cuadrados one. Oh, shit, we're living. Oh, see, you guys are too old for me. Anyways, think uh, the you the, sure about that? <laughs> the I got that uh, now. Got I that. got that now. Floor um, in my head. The worst thing that happened at T-Mobile is when I worked at Monterey Park. So at that shopping center, there's security mm-hmm. guards. You think having security guards, they are gonna save you? So there was literally a van that pulled up. Four guys walked into the store. All of a sudden, you just fucking see them rip out the phones off the walls. Dude, me and another, because I was a system manager at that moment, and one of our other employees who was a fucking sick-ass fool, badass, hey, what the fuck? Me and him both ran out, and they got into a van. They left. You know where our security guard was? Eating Yoshinoa next door. He comes outside. He's like, yo, like we just got... I, I don't know what you want me to do. I, I, I can't do nothing. I just can call the cops. I'm like, fool, we just got robbed, and you cannot do shit about this. But I heard that now workers, if they fight back, anybody that gets robbed, they get fired. Yeah, they're not allowed to anymore. Not allowed to. Honestly, why would you, though? Um, I it's, wouldn't. Not my, it's not my stuff. <laughs> I know, it's I'm not, not my stuff. Shot, I'm not getting shot for an iPhone. Fight for my store, bro. Wait, like, what was your first job? I said, the McDonald's? McDonald's. What was the worst thing that happened at McDonald's? Honestly, like a weekend, this crackhead lady was trying to fight me. Like she went around the counter and like got up you didn't square up. I was ready to. Oh, uh, you didn't square up. I nah, was nah. low key like I was only sixteen. <laughs> nah, but it's true. McDonald's. McDonald's. Hey, people, especially right there in La Puente. Man. Hold up, it was right there on Hacienda and Francisco. Like <laughs> that's a bad. And it was. It's not the greatest. Oh, yeah, right there by the Planet Fitness. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so you know how he gets right there. All right, you're going to hurt some feelings here, guys. By your guys' answers. Okay. How to move forward from a long-term relationship? Invest in yourself. Honestly, that's all you can really do. How do you do that, though, beginning? Um, Just trying to remember what you like to do for yourself, what you enjoy, what... um, Taking the other person out, like, this is pretty much taking the other person out of the equation. It's like, okay... If I want to say me and this person had a concert plan, well, now I'm going to go to that concert by myself or I'm going to look for a friend to go and enjoy it with. Like, well, don't stop doing stuff for yourself. Don't stop doing just the little things for yourself. That's how I feel like you move on with the long term. You know, it's never easy, but, you know, baby steps. The more you do for yourself, the little, like, things you get comfortable. Get comfortable in the places that you guys went to. Make new memories in them. And that's how you move on. What about you? Remember who you were before you were with that person. You were good without them before you even met them. Yeah. Remind yourself that you're going to be good after they're gone. Yeah, because I think people depend on their happiness. They depend on their partner to bring them that happiness. But if you're not happy, you should be happy before. Yeah, you should be happy. In a relationship. Yeah, because I think when you get into a relationship, like you, you have to be, you have to love yourself and you have to be happy with who you are so when you meet someone they add to the happiness they don't you don't build that relationship up of the way they made me feel that's right you know like because if you're not telling me what i want to hear then i'm going to be miserable and when they leave you're going to be miserable yeah if you base your mm-hmm. happiness so, solely on that person so if you're gone if you're right now in the phases of you just you just got done broken up and you're sitting in the room dark depressed not doing shit for yourself how Pepe just said Remember who you were before you got with them. If you're a happy, loving person, going out, outgoing person, become that again. 
it's going to be a little bit different, right? You're not the same person anymore. You got you have a little bit of hurt on you. Not going to be the same, but remember who you were. You know, start doing little things that that you make you happy. Find peace and love the time with yourself so you don't have to depend on anybody else when you uh move on from this. That was mm-hmm. that was going to hurt some people. All right, there was Oh, this one's gotcho. I read this one earlier. This one's gotcha. gotcha. I've been DMing my my friend's sister. We share a lot of memes here and there and we'll get we'll go really intimate. She sends me pictures of her tats in just a you know, a, a string if to make it easier. Covering her, you know, her front. Is it is being getting mixed signals. I don't know if she wants something or is that just me as a friend? I feel like if they're sending pictures like that, that's way more than just a friend. But that's your that's your friend. Like, isn't there a line? Like, that's your that's, that's your, your friend's friend sister. sister. Like, I mean, just know that if you're gonna be doing that, you're you're putting yourself at a risk to lose a friendship. I believe because I mean, as much as like, even even though you guys are both grown, you know, you guys can obviously do what you want. But say something goes wrong, obviously, like that's his sister. He's going to have her back over yours. So just know that, like, what you're doing, you're putting your own self at a risk. And if that girl's willing, like, it's worth it, then. Hey. But now you'll, the question is, how good of a friend is he? Is he an acquaintance or an actual friend? What are you, look, yeah. <laughs> what are you looking? Are you looking for a partner? <coughs> nope. Not right now. Damn, why so cold? I want to. I just don't want to be in a relationship, if I'm being honest. Like, I'm good right now. Like, I'm in this specific stage in life, I think I'm, for the first time in a long time, mm-hmm. and not even a long time, just ever, I feel like things are going well for me, that I want to enjoy, I guess, success by myself for a while, you know? Mm-hmm. What about you? Honestly, same. Obviously, like, I just got out of a relationship, and I feel like, honestly, I don't miss the stress. <laughs> At all. <laughs> I don't miss worrying, having to worry about someone else. And not, I'm just good. And the way you said it, like, right now I'm focused on my own success. Like, obviously you guys know I've been doing a lot of things on the side and trying to get to places. So it's like, right now that's my main focus. And it's like, I just want to boss up right now. That's right. Boss up. Boss up. Boss that's up. what it is. You know, after a relationship, you got to get your PhD. You got to open up a business. You got to just level up. <laughs> that's right. No, but that's honestly, right. for real, like... Make them, <clears throat> make them regret it. You said it. All right. My husband of four years came to me saying he needed mental health. He needed mental health and that he had financial issues. When I tried to get him help, he denied the help and said he had to leave our home. He said he could fix himself. He couldn't fix himself in our home. I then found out he was actually cheating on me. So I quietly asked him to leave. God damn. damn. I'm sorry, mama. That's they did you dirty. Value yourself. Glad that you left. But my dude, like, I think, you ha- yeah, you have to have the boss to tell them you don't want to be with them. Like, don't use mental health as a crush. Don't use financial issues as a crutch in order for you to leave. Like, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I use that shit in seventh grade. I can't be with you because I need to work on me. My mind It's not you. It's, it's not me. Real. It's not you. It's me. Honestly, what, what's what? the worst excuse you use to break up with someone? I no, probably the same thing. Like, oh, I need time for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I think, I think we've, we've all, all used, used it. it. I think we've all used it at one point. But I think to that extent, though, like you guys were marrying. That's um. That like, means there was no trust. Not just that. Like I don't know. Maybe because I wouldn't. Um, again, my moral compass is not that way, but I don't get how you can lie to someone knowing that you're going to hurt them more. Like, might as well just be like, hey, this is up front. This is what's going on. Facts. All right. How do you become independent from your parents without feeling guilty, especially being the first gen and the oldest daughter and you help support them financially too? If somebody knows the answer, <laughs> send it to my DMs. I'll let y'all slide in. Go for it. Send me that answer because I really don't know. I can't answer that myself. You think if you were to choose yourself, you your parents will hate you? I don't think they'd hate me. I think I'd hate myself. I definitely feel like 
this person feels is definitely gonna feel guilty. I mean, especially if they, she helps financially. Yeah. Um, but I think for you to grow as a person, like, unfortunately, there is circumstances where you're gonna have to make that tough decision. And maybe it's just not. Maybe you don't have to completely stop helping. You know, but maybe, like, if it's you living with them, you gotta separate yourself and be like, hey, you know what? Like, I got my own bills now. Like, let me figure it out. And then once I'm able to help you guys again, I will. But Due to that pressure of being that the oldest. That's yeah. hard. Honestly, or, that's hard. I have a friend yeah. who does that, and I feel for her all even, the time. Even sometimes, maybe it's like the second oldest, right? Because maybe the first one is a fuck up. And if you have younger siblings, they're just out and about, whatever. So there's only, there's always one child, guy or girl, that gets left with that responsibility that they themselves put on. Because they like, why are we living in this house with... So many people, and my parents can't even do it. Yeah. But I think there was, like, a story of, like, this older gentleman. He was already probably in his 60s, 50s, 60s. No wife, no kids, because he's been a caregiver to his mom his whole life. So he's trying to figure out how to be in a relationship because the only relationship he's ever been in has been taking care of his mom. But, like... I think in the Lat- the Latino household, like that, that's so common. Uh, yeah, that's very common. Being the oldest, being or just being the oldest, or being the one that's isn't scared to go out there into the real world and try something, but you get left with that responsibility of like, yeah. I need to help them out because if I don't do it, then I know nobody else will. None of my siblings will. None of my whatever. So, damn, like, do you build that like sense of resentment to yourself? Like damn, what what I what would my life them a little bit? Mm. Yeah, and, honestly, and I feel like I've been lucky enough not to go through that, but I've seen a lot of people around me that do, and I'm just like, like I go through it, and there's times where I'm not even gonna lie. Do I resent my parents sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. But then I feel like a piece of shit for resenting them, mm-hmm. you know. So it's one of those things where like. Do I resent them in a sense? Yeah, because I've had to put my life on hold in a sense to help them out. But at the end of the day, like you said, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Mm -hmm. My sister has a responsibility. She's got kids. Yeah. And right now it's like all I really have to worry about is myself, my bills, and then helping them out with their bills and stuff, you know? What is the responsibility that you have with yourself? Like what do you owe yourself? I owe myself to be happy, but at the end of the day, I feel like I want to build a life of my own, but I feel like right now, right now in this in this stage in life where I'm yeah. at right now, I don't get a chance to, for that same reason. I don't want to just stop helping them. Yeah. Because if I stop helping them, like, they honestly have nobody else to help them, you know? So, yeah, yeah no, I'm going to be that. happy. It's like, I'm going to be happy living my, my best life somewhere else while they're over there struggling to even mm-hmm. pay their bills. Like, how do they pay their home? Mm. Or they may have enough money for their home, but now at this point, they don't have enough money for their bills. Mm. You know? It's like, I'm going to be you don't want to be selfish. Le- yeah, you don't want to be left with the, damn, I should have. For that same more. reason, exactly. More. So yeah. that's why right now, my my I'm focused on being successful in any way, shape, or form, you know? Have you or do you still lurk on your ex's social media or lurk on your ex's new partner? Think everyone has but curious for the reasons why. Why what you guys think? Why are you laughing? You want to answer this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we all do it. Let's be honest. Nah. I do. Well, you've done it. I stalk him. Who don't lie? I have. I have. Yes, but you you know you can't lurk on someone's page when you're blocked, fool. <laughs> um, I got ways. You got them fake accounts, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. But if you see one that has no profile page, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> User ten thirty nine forty nine. User um, no, I'm just kidding. No, I have though. I think, and honestly, I feel like, and all of my exes that I have stalked, I don't think I stalked them. Because, like, I miss them. I think it's more like curiosity. Cur- like, what does that say? Curiosity killed the cat. I know. I heard that. Because I'd be going lurking and I'd be getting hurt. I'm sorry. <laughs> but is it, 
do you would you guys like do you, have you ever lurked? Oh yeah. All right. So do you guys lurk, hoping that they're doing worse than when they left percent. you? And when you see that they're doing worse, <laughs> it's like ha, you downgraded. As fucked up as it sounds, like yeah, fucking loser. <laughs> Damn, you was really hurt. I was. No, I'm isn't now. That was years ago. Now I'm chilling. I haven't done it in years. Is it crazy? Do you guys ever find it weird that whatever ex you have, if they move on, that that new person kind of similar resembles also you in a way? No, looks nothing like me. I'll show y'all later. (laughs) I'll show y'all later. It's funny. No, I have gotten that a couple of times with honestly a couple of my exes. Every time like they'll post on my new people like, dude, I thought that was you. I'm like, dude. Oh, be like, who? Who was that? Show me. Show me. I don't look nothing alike. (laughs) Hey, actually, I had sent that to my best friend. Oh, I sent it to Carol, and she was like, twins, bro. Shout out, Carol, bro. Shout out, Carol. Carol. All right, do you guys, do you guys think you, your best friend shares something between you two? What the fuck? Do you think your best friend shares something between you and their significant other? Thoughts. Should I be mad or understanding that sometimes their partner is their other best friend? As well, especially if they're married. You tell me. Wait, like. You tell me. As the best friend, should I be mad that she has her husband as her best friend? No, so I think what this person is saying. So you have your partner. Mm -hmm. Say your partner is best friends with Carol. Are you mad or should you be mad that they may have a certain like. No, uh, I should. Speaking of Carol, um, her and her boyfriend have been together for like eight plus years since they're like high school sweetheart. Mm. And I grew up with him since kindergarten. So it's like me and him have a cool ass relationship. Like we're dope. And honestly, but it's cause like we grew up with each other and then like that's my best friend. Mm. And honestly, I feel like it makes her happy because like there's times where she's like, we're praying for you. And it's so like beautiful to have like a couple that you look up to and being like, you know, we're here to guide you. Like kind of like a, parent like it's weird that's healthy yeah it's, i think it's very that's healthy, healthy. like i would no. love for I like know, motherfucker i know i would no. love for like whenever i have my like significant other to be really close to my best friend because at the end of the day like even like when marcus you know he asked me like dude i need your help to pick out her ring i want to be that person that he goes to you know like i think it's good to have a healthy relationship with your your best friend's partner. Hmm. Do you believe in that? Obviously with boundaries, though. Oh, a thousand percent, right? A thousand boundaries. percent. All right. I think you can answer this one. I'm a plus size girl. Scared. <laughs> oh, don't look at me like that. No. <laughs> this is, no. This, wow. No. This, that piece of advice from coming from a girl. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no. But that was. I'm a plus. <laughs> all right. This this person said, I'm a plus size girl, scared to date because I feel guys would be turned off. What are tips to get over this? Honestly, um, don't stop yourself. You might think, you know, once you get like the shape you want that you'll be ready. But honestly, it's like date someone who's going to love you for you. Why have that mentality of like, oh, if I look this way, they're going to love me. Like, no, like, love, you need to be kinder to yourself, thinking that no one's going to love you the way you are. You got to be kinder to yourself, honestly, because once you start showing yourself that type of love that you're looking for, you're not going to care about how you look or how that person perceives you. As long as you know and they show you that they love you, it doesn't matter what size you are. And to the right person, it won't matter, honestly. For the right person, you'll be the right one for them. Exactly. Exactly the way you are. And say, hey, you know, you want to, you get with someone and they are the type of person like, oh, you know what? If if it's in within you and that person also pushes you to do better. Yeah. Then you know what? Help find that person that will help you. But don't find that person that will find you once you get there. Find that person that's going to help you get there with you. Like. Yeah. And then like you also want to. <sighs> Because I think, like, when you become a couple, like, you go through phases, right? Like, you may that have... happy way. Yeah. To... <laughs> yeah, like, when you're when you're broken up and you get skinnier, Ah, mijo, estás bien? Te miras un poquito flaquito. 
And then you Está deprimido. Yeah, or like you fall in love and ah, mijo, estás enamorado porque estás creciendo un poco. It's like damn, be your own family sometimes. Be like, what about you? I been, know, <laughs> honestly, enjoy yourself in what, all like phases. You got impress, though. Like once you're taken, like you got no. Okay, to but so now moving like kind of shifting into that same question, same uh, topic. But what do you do when you're bettering yourself? So you're going to the gym, you're feeling good, you're looking good, but your partner doesn't give a fuck about that. Do you? What if you don't start? You don't look at them anymore like that. Like I think for me, like me just speaking, like. I want to look at my partner and be like, damn, like, that's mine right there. And it comes, like, not just the physical, but emotional, mentally, and the way they pr- they put the energy out there. But, you know, when a girl cares about herself, she cares about the way she looks, the way she feels, how she gets ready and stuff like that. Like, that's super attractive. Like, I want to keep myself top tier so my partner can also look at me like that and not be like, you know, just the first couple months get all ready. And then after that, like, but it's like, bro, like, what if your partner doesn't look at you the way she used to or he used to? Like, what do you do there? Like, is that like a... I feel like you should obviously voice your opinion. I mean, it. yeah. I mean, if you're going, right? say, like, let's take it back to the gym, right? Um, Say I'm working on myself and my partner is still eating bad or whatever, right? You know, one, it's up to me whether it's going to be like, you know what? If that's what you want to do, go for it. I'm still going to do what I got to do. Um, if it really starts to affect you at the point, like, hey, you know what? Like, maybe not like I want you to look better. Maybe it's like, hey, you know, what? I worry about your health. Approach it in a different way. Hey, you know what? You don't need to get skinny, but let's go work out, you know, just to stay healthy. It's not even so much about the physical, but more of like how like helping just being healthy in general or you guys whatever want- the case might be. Hey, you know what? Hey, um, or just little things. Maybe you guys got comfortable and you guys don't get ready anymore. Hey, you know what? Be take that initiative. Let's go somewhere nice. Get ready. Yeah, but what? If, what if you lose that? Like, wouldn't you want to look at your partner and be like, like, damn? But that- why do you lose it? Is it because the efforts are not coming in both ways, or say say how you said you're you're putting effort like you're gonna go out, but you get ready mm-hmm. and you want to feel good and you want to when you're out you want to impress, right? But your partner's like, nah. What if like you're like you look at your partner like. <laughs> like, I mean, at that point, then you don't like them. I think once you start looking at your person, you're like, uh, like, this is who I'm with. I think you gotta re- reevaluate what, what is your new. Obviously, you grow, so it's like maybe you have a new set of standards, and that's okay. Honestly, it's totally okay to have like a new perspective on things. You know, this person wasn't for you. Um, but I would say try to talk about it before making a rash decision of like, Leaving. I'm just so out. How would you approach that conversation with your partner? Hey, I need you to uh, better yourself. I need you to improve yourself. Yeah. Honestly, like, how would you approach honestly, it though? I wouldn't, I feel like it depends on what kind of relationship you have with the person because I mean, you would tell your friend, right? If they were slacking off a hey, like, but I think it's different for a guy to tell a girl than a girl to tell a guy. Like, a girl is going to tell a guy what yes, they need, but if you care what they about want. Some, if you really care about some outfit. What if a guy tells you that? What if a guy comes to you? Honestly, like, what if your partner tells you, like, babe, no chingas? No, I have them. <laughs> and then I was like. Okay, but I, how'd you feel, though? At the time, shitty. There you go. Don't get me wrong. I need yeah. y'all to tell me. I need y'all to tell me. So tell me. No, honestly. You look good, bro. There's times hey, where, like, I, boy, do right? need, I need someone to be honest with me. And be like, because you know what? That also made me realize. I was like, oh, shit. But that's like, like as guys, like as guys, I don't want to say something that's going to offend my girl. Or that's going to, yeah. I mean, sometimes, sometimes, right? People have like crazy body images, mm-hmm. and like body image issues. That like, let's say you do say something like that. I, I'd, in my, like me personally, I'd be scared of like messing with what but they're the going day, through. If you don't say anything, you're just prolonging the issue. So what? But you end up hurting her by just being like, hey, so you know what? Way she's getting hurt. Right? Either way, you just said you were hurt. If you tell your partner, man, I don't know. For a guy, I think it's just how you said, like, you're going to hurt him no matter what. And as guys, I'd rather not hurt you because, I one, I don't want to argue. Two, I don't want you. I don't want to be called okay. names here and there. Mm-hmm. So. You say, so what's the outcome of not telling me? Then I would do it in the most indirect way. Oh, so to show. Like, so <laughs> passive, like, I think you can't be passive aggressive, right? Not, not like 
But not like. So how would you do it? Babe, let's go to the gym together. But that's pretty. But that's pretty much what I said, though. No, because you're saying to tell them. Like, I'm not going to tell you directly. No, obviously, but it's like, hey, like, let's be healthy. Like, hey, let's cook dinner together. And then you plan out, like, a healthy ass dinner. <laughs> a salad. You could a use lot. a salad. You can use salad. <laughs> you can't say that. You, you can't say, say that. Yeah, I know some really good salads, though. No, no one, no one wants that. All right. I want a list. This one's a gacho. Gacho. Some of my siblings don't speak to me because I always speak what's right and ask questions, especially when my money is needed. For our parents, keep in mind, I help our parents the most when when sick and on a regular basis. But if I ask for help, their excuse has always been, we work and I'm a S-A-H-M, but never get a thank you. Damn. Kind of like how we said earlier, huh? Yeah, it's kind of like the the parent situation type thing. Where it's like, you kind of feel responsible. And it's like, if you don't do it, who else would do it? Yeah, I think the... Honestly, I feel like some people are put on this earth to just help others. Unfortunately. But at the same time, see it as a blessing. That you're able to do that for other people. And I know it can be like, feel very heavy on you you know but they obviously see something in you that they can still come to you and like be comfortable yeah i think there's in every family there will be a black sheep Mm -hmm. the one that is willing to go out there and want better and want more the one that is willing to set their future family up for better opportunities and not just that, you're going to be the one that that's going to be breaking that generational curse because now you know what to teach your kids, you know? Yeah. I and mean, it's like, you know how to go around it now, whereas, you know, unfortunately, your siblings, like, they're going to have that same mindset, and they're going to pass that to their kids, and then their kids are going to struggle the same way. You, you, know? can't, you, can't blame, you can't blame someone else for not being the way that you are. Mm-hmm. Like, we're hardworking, driven people. We risk whatever we need to risk in order to get to the next step because we know we need to do it. And we cannot blame our siblings or whoever for them not following what we're doing because maybe maybe their happiness is different than ours. Maybe their meaning of true love, true happiness, and what life really is is not our definition of, of that. And yet we can't blame them either. It's just understanding that you know, you're two different people coming from the same family, but you chose this path, they chose that path. And you love them, love them dearly. And how they said at the end, you don't ever get a thank you. You may never will. You know, it's expected. You know, I expect you to take care of the family. I expect you to make sure the house is good. You know, you may never get a thank you because this is what's required of you. Even without, you know, those are the standards that our parents put put on us from little. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And They just know. expect more from you. But, you know, as heavy as that is, try to see that as a blessing. Like, mm-hmm. they, they see it as a way where they put you above them, kind of. Where it's like, maybe your parents can rely on them. Or, your, you know, your siblings can re- rely on each other. But you, like, I've heard it, it as like, a blessing, you know. I've heard it from instances where... Dads, moms, they're hard on a certain a certain child because they know they can do better. They know they can mm-hmm. withstand more pain, more more hurt, more hard days compared to their siblings. It's not that they love everybody differently. It's just, hey, I know I can push you, and I want you to be better and do better. I don't think I could do this with your brother or your sister because they're not like you. You know, some siblings, if you put them all together, some are quiet, some are very outgoing, some are desmadrosos, and some are, like, to the to the book, you know, and dads are, and dad and moms, even, like, when they're a bunch of daughters, there's moms are harder on one daughter because esa la, la cabrona, esa la que, la que va a superar, you know? Me. And same thing with, like, the boys, like, I'm going to push you as hard as I can. And I know one day you'll thank me. 
maybe not now, maybe not when you get older, maybe later on in life, but I'd rather you hate me for how I treated you and now you're living better than hate me for not setting you up in the position that I know you could have been. It's a, I think it's like a little, it's a good and bad thing, right? Like yeah. now anybody, anybody can treat us a certain way and be like, bro, my dad. <laughs> my dad don't even like me half the time. I like, I'm like, if you don't like me, don't yeah. don't say anything me. mean to me that my mom probably hasn't said to me. Right? Yeah, like, so you don't like, like me? Bro, my my parents don't even fucking like me. They never liked me. You don't want to talk to me? That's cool, because I really don't. My mom don't even talk. <laughs> All right, look at. Nah, my mom loves me. Yeah, my parents love me. Mom, love you. My dad, too. Don't get it twisted. I know. Um, They're hard on me, but. Someone put, I talked to a guy, and after some time, he disappeared, then reappeared continuously, but called me toxic for not allowing him to do so. Telling him what he made me feel with his actions. Oh. So she got ghosted. Guy came back. And then called and then her toxic called for her not. Toxic bro. Because he ghosted her. <laughs> what? He's gaslighting you. Run. Ooh. Oh. Run. <laughs> I would have said earlier, I'm this way because you did this. Ooh. I don't know. That's toxic. What's a gaslighting phrase? What's the worst one? The worst one I've heard, maybe that like. You made me you this made way. Me this you way. made me this way. Mm. Don't you remember when you did this? Damn, someone's hurt. <laughs> Not me. Though. What's the Same. worst that you've used? The worst that I've that uh, damn. Why does it have to be me? What if it was opposite? Why does right. it gotta be me? Let's be real here. Okay, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, damn. I think that's. I'm this way. I'm this way because of everything you've done to me. <laughs> yeah, it happens. You? What's the worst one you used? I'm a child of God. I don't, <laughs> I don't gaslight. Like, I, don't I don't gaslight. All right. The what's this one? My best friend of eleven years lived out of state. Due to natural disasters, they lost their home, causing us to get closer than ever and falling in love. Three years into the relationship, after hotel room sleepovers, countless hours on the phone, falling asleep together, I found out they had a double life and was married. Bro. That's crazy. Hey. Three. Honestly, no, first mamas. of all, how do people find the time? Three years? How do people find the time though? Because it's like, bro, three years. That that's you're a... married, three and three years. But like, there's no signs at all. Oh, that's what I want to know. There had to be like, a thousand percent. Were you like, like, couldn't answer? Late? Couldn't answer calls after a certain time. Yeah, because like, there's signs. I feel like there definitely is signs. Or like, oh, I'll talk to you when I get to work. When I'm going to work. Oh, when I, I'll call you when I get out of work. Hey, honestly, though, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've dealt with people who did not care. And they told me straight up, well, if it's not you, it's going to be someone else. I was Talk like, damn. To. Like, they had a whole family and everything. And I was just like, only if your wife knew. That was crazy. And it'll be someone else, huh? Mm-hmm. Better. It's going to be me. Hey, so. Go go ahead, sis. Go in front of the line. I know. Nah, someone asked. Damn, should I bring this one up? Yeah. Yeah, they don't know this. Yes. Cheese man, why isn't someone on your team anymore? Dang. Dun, 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 dun. All love. It, it, it's it's all love. You know, things things happen for a reason. Don't get it twisted. It just sometimes. There is no alignment, in a sense. But, you know, as we said before, and we've always said, we wish them the best. Our visions isn't isn't the same currently right now, but our love. Mm -hmm. You know, we still got love for him. I hope he has love for us, and I hope he still does. But, you know, we're, we're staying on track. We're going this way. He wants to do um, his own way. Perfect power to you. Still got a lot of love. Don't get it twisted. Love my brother. It's just right now is not our time to get it. 
just to clear everybody mm-hmm. up. Just to clear everybody, everybody And honestly, up. I feel like that's okay. Like, me and my best friend had a breakup. And we came back better. So who knows? But, you know, sometimes break from people are okay. Yeah. Sometimes taking them. Yeah, because shout out my boy that's um, taking a little vacation at uh, Penn State University. You know, me and him didn't talk for like two years. And then we, things aligned and we started talking again. And right now we're closer than ever. All right. This is a good question. Check this out. How do you guys feel about phone calls? Do you answer every every phone call or it only depends on who's calling you? It depends oh, on Oh, definitely who's calling. on who's calling. It depends on who's calling. If it's anybody, any of you guys, <laughs> and like... No, sometimes my being parents. Like, you guys just calls. I mean, I never. I don't think we've ever. <laughs> I don't think each you other. ever called me. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. We ain't even trying no more. That's right. Good thing I never tried. Yeah, this phone. now we got clear. I'm like, who's this? Hello? Who? Who's I this? don't even got this number saved. Right. Phone calls or Facetimes? Phone calls. No, honestly, I like Facetimes. I don't know why. I do. Yeah. I just do phone calls. I think I'd rather do a phone call than a FaceTime. I think it depends on the moment. If I'm at home, FaceTime. Yeah. If I'm working, phone call, because I can just have you in the headphones. It's easier. But I I think depending on who it is. I hate the I hate the phrase of I'm not a good texter. I only like phone calls. And then when you call them, they don't answer. But then when you text them, they take like a fucking day to reply. Do you think that that applies because they just don't give a fuck about you? They don't give a fuck about you. I knew it. That's how I take it. Damn, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take <laughs> that. I'm like, oh, you took a day? Cool. I'm gonna take two. I'm mm. gonna take three. Oh, you forgot. Oh. You forgot to reply. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I forgot to reply too. Hmm. Okay. Honestly, Sorry, y'all you guys need to take in consideration that some Ooh. people's um, social texters? Bet? Honestly. I would triple text. I will blow up your phone. It depends. If if it's it depends. Some, it depends. Like it, yeah, but no, right. like if I'm with you though. Oh, I'm sorry. like triple texting. Oh no no no! Like I I think as as a guy you don't want to overstep either. So like I'll send the text, and if they don't reply for like after hours, then like I'll just post something direct us on on Instagram. <laughs> oh, you're really good about that. Yeah. Or look, you or or make it simpler. Make it simpler. Just send the memes on Instagram or TikTok. Then they were, and it's crazy that they'll reply there, but it won't reply to the text. If hey, I'm sorry, I already told you I was sorry for not texting you the other day. No, I'm just kidding. Honestly, no. I'll text once, and then if they're like, if you don't text me, then I will. Yeah, right? Yeah. I feel like you got the hint. There's certain people, I'm not going to lie, have been toxic. 100 phone calls. <laughs> Damn. 100 phone calls? Hey, it was what, a, what uh, that what that What that sound looking like? Call line real quick. Yeah, what's up? Right now it's dead. <laughs> she let it die on purpose. For real. Like, hold up. She deleted the call log. Hold up. And the messages. <laughs> Not because No, I keep all, no, it's okay. I keep all my messages. Share well, locations with your partners or no? Honestly. Mm. Mm. Honestly, I feel like I've done oh well, obviously in my past relationships, I have done that. And I feel like it makes me crazy. I feel like it makes me want to look if I have it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. rather not know. But that's when the FaceTimes come in. Because then I'm going to start FaceTiming you because I want to know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to ask for your location, but I'm going to expect you to answer my FaceTime now. Look, I feel about this very strongly. Si no te contestan la primera vez, déjalos. Let them call you back. Don't blow up the phone. Don't call... Two, three, four times. Tú déjalos a la verga. Because the the more you blow up their phone, the more they're going to get a resent and be like, dude, this person's crazy. Let, let them call you back later. Let them call you back later. If they, Look, if they really want to, they would. Right now. If they wanted to, they would. No, I've only done that to like one person. Everyone else. Times? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna see this and he's gonna be fucking cracking up because he knows. But, I think we've um, all, we've all been in like in a talk like I know I've been in a talk relationship like from high oh school, yeah, dude. high school to right after high school, super toxic. Like it's one of those like what you did to me, I'm gonna do it back, and then it's like okay what you did to me, I'm gonna do it back. Oh wait you did it again, okay I'm gonna do it back. 
Yeah. But we loved each other at the end of the day, dog. That's true love for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We're willing to hurt each other and, and, and get he, back together. And get back together. That's right. Yeah. That's true love. Come right on, there. we we couldn't leave. We couldn't let other Y'all people. Kept right. that same chapter over and over again, huh? Yeah, just literally just changing the punctuations, timelines. Nah, that shows wild, bro. No, hang no. I start like you know you can hard it and react to it now. So when they don't, <laughs> that's me like kind of being petty, like or like trying to get their attention. I'll start reacting to the messages they don't reply to. You get me? Like to give them like a hey, Fuck like that. They don't reply. They don't reply. Like that's it. You don't need to beg nobody. I know, low key. Cut this out. I'm better than that. Cut this out. You're better than begging. I. You deserve. Yo. The world. You don't deserve to <laughs> Wait, beg anybody. Are you, are, you, are you guys easy para que se ilusionen con, con alguien? Dude, I'm such a hopeless romantic. I fall in love in the first day. I'm honest now. I'd be <laughs> thinking about like marriage and stuff on the first day. What does it take for you to fall in love? Or like to get attached to somebody? Damn. Next question. <laughs> no, no. What is it? I don't know. I don't fall in love. Mm, when's the last time you've been in love? Been years. Next question. Do you want to fall in love? <laughs> not right now. I'm good right now. Mm. Someday, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But just not right now. Just not right now. Yeah, no, I think I'm like Genesis. I'm a hopeless romantic. As soon as I get a good morning, a good night, and hey, how are you throughout your day? I'm like. Dude, wedding bells. They, they I'm gonna, picking out my wedding they, song. This shit going to work. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hell yeah. I can see us doing this, 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 this. And then they don't reply. And I'm like, oh. I guess, I guess you're not my soulmate. I, <laughs> Moving on. I'm like, damn, is this part of the story or is it over? <laughs> Next chapter, huh? Next, Next chapter. chapter. Next chapter. Next person. Next chapter, please. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. We can end it on on this one right here. What is your perfect ideal love life? Ooh, my perfect ideal love life. Or love story. I honestly want to be able to be with someone I can trust who's willing to fight for me the way I fight for them. I want to be my, like, in my head, my future. I want to, like, be able to be with my family, but for both of us to be successful enough and... So that we can take our time to really just be a family and enjoy it. I feel like that would be my perfect ideal of life. You know, someone, um, honestly, my ideal husband, I want God to bring him to me. I pray for that all the time because I'm just like, the people right now aren't cutting it. <laughs> you know, like, so right now. The people. The people right now. The <laughs> people right now. That's I just bring crazy. myself out. You just my bring yourself roster. out. That's what I'm going to say. Gotcha. My roster. roster. No, I don't have no roster, guys. <laughs> nah, but it's, yeah. Yeah, I want a godly man. I want someone patient. And kind. And kind. And loving. And funny. And someone who you'd be proud to be like, hey, that's my wife and the mother of my children. That's mine right there. Do you guys think you deserve love? Definitely. I think we all deserve love. I think we all deserve love. Do you think you deserve love? I do. I think I give love and I deserve love. I think we give love in the hopes that one day it comes back. Mm-hmm. Damn. She said it on the previous episode, no? Karma. I feel like it should work that way, too. Give love. Get love back. Facts. Love it. Yep. Well, that was a good internal podcast. A lot of confessions. A lot of a little wild, no? Yeah. It started off started off off the bat. But you know, I appreciate everybody that that <laughs> literally in less than twenty less than twelve hours, you guys did your thing. You guys uh shout out the not gonna lies, the confessions and shit. Comment down below if you guys wanna see this this type of podcast once again, reactions and hopefully some sort of advice that helped you guys out and appreciate y'all. Stay toxic. <laughs> <laughs> Right. If, if she Stay don't, toxic. if she don't answer, call again and again. <laughs> you already know. Blow up that phone, honey. <laughs> Share locations and Facetime that person. No. Honestly, block them. Leave the and start a fake profile. <laughs> leave the if they want to ghost you, leave them dead. Leave them in the grave. 
Block him in circle. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. Boo, bitch. Boo, bitch. <laughs> I'm back.